Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Emma. I'm here we talk about homeschool, motherhood, and lifestyle. I have a nine-year-old boy, and today I want to bring you how to homeschool your child with ADHD. <music> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I want to bring you today how to homeschool your child with ADHD. The first thing that I want to talk is about patience. You do need patience and love. Kids with ADHD tend to feel very frustrated when they encounter some troubles or problems with something that they have to do because they, have, they tend to be very perfectionist. And uh, if they encounter some type of trouble, they tend to feel frustrated. Uh, let's say an example, if they have a subject where they are having troubles, they tend to be frustrated, they tend to uh, feel defeated. And this comes from the fact that they are perfectionists. They tend to be perfectionist. So you need a lot, a lot of patience. Second point, uh, and second, uh, I will say a tip that I would like to give you is curriculum. Uh, you need to make sure that when you purchase a curriculum is one that will spark your child's curiosity. It's one that is going to spark your child's motivation to learn. So I suggest you to make sure that you take the time to look at those curriculums or at, at those programs. You want something that is short, that is not tedious, that doesn't take a lot of time. They don't like that neither. They don't like, their attention span is not as big. So you need to find something that will uh, spark first curiosity and that will help them with their attention span. And something that is short, that is uh, to the point, is something that they are very attracted too and it's very important for them I'm sorry that I'm looking back and forth is because I have my notes here you want something as well that is fun they are like very they like everything that is very hands-on they like everything that is fun that has games and play they are very kinesthetic so they need that part uh, with their curriculums so we have one that is for our breeding and is a, a type of program that he can just it has a lot of activities he can move around uh, i even create games with the cards where he can stand or or sit down or i make him move the hands or the legs something where he is constantly moving and that takes me to the third uh, point that i want to bring you here is toys I know that some parents buy certain purchase certain uh, toys for them to keep them entertained while they are doing certain subjects. But you have to be very careful with what type of toys you are purchasing. An example of that is if you purchase Lego and you're using the Legos because you're trying to uh, keep him entertained and concentrated in what you're teaching him, let's say is math. Uh, math is something that requires a lot of focus, a lot of concentration, as well as reading and writing. And if you're giving him Lego, which is a toy that requires a lot of uh, focus and concentration and attention, it's almost like you're putting him to compete in between those two. And guess what? He's going to choose the Legos because they are fun. Uh, he noticed that he's putting a lot of attention to that. He wants to finish building uh that creation that's, that he's about to do and he's going to go towards the labels so you have to be very careful sorry with the toys that you're choosing uh, to keep him entertained and let me just give you two suggestions and the first one is the squishies this is something that doesn't require from him to focus or have attention to it he just squish and he has something and still he can move his hands so it's something that will help them as well i have these therapeutic that can help them as well with that is almost like a slime and uh, it's something that doesn't require for them to focus so much on that which goes to my third point breaks 
you want to give him breaks in between subjects. Yes, you do. You want to give him that time for him to have a mind break and, and focus on something else. Uh, you want to give him that time for him to move, to stretch, to, you know, have a mental break of him doing subjects. Uh, and I think it's very important uh, to give breaks in between subjects. I usually do 15 minutes. That will depend on the amount of times that you guys have and obviously uh, what you choose for that you think will work for you guys. Next point is movement. They need to move. I try to incorporate activities and I try to choose curriculums where he can move, where he can have time to express himself, where he can uh, jump if he wants to jump or walk if he wants to walk. Subjects that are going to help him to control a little bit that and not controlling a way to put those emotions like calming them down, but controlling a way that he has he has the ability to move if he wants. If we are doing writing, then I try to as much as I can and is and we are able to do it to give him a break prior us doing writing because I know writing is something that he's not having a like for it is almost like it's tedious for him so I try to give him a break prior we do that subject okay the next point is a structure I know it said that kids with ADHD need a structure but they need as well a spontaneity you don't want to create so much of a structure that your feel your kid will feel suffocated they feel like they don't have the time to breathe is always constantly doing something. I have a day, which is Friday, where our homeschool is more relaxed. Yes, we still do some subjects, we still do uh, homeschool, but it's more relaxed. It lasts less amount of time, our homeschool, during Fridays. And I try to uh, choose a subjects like nature study or reading and create something that is sh in a short amount of time okay and the last one and i think the most important one is to create fun to make your homeschool fun to do activities where he encountered that yes you guys are structured when it needs to be serious is serious but at the same time he can have fun he can express himself he has the time to move if he wants to move he has the time to sit if he wants to see he has the freedom to do those things that's the blessing of doing homeschool that you can choose what is best for your kid that you can choose what will help him with that that you can choose having a good time in your homeschool so i hope these tips and points that i bring you here are helpful to you if it is please don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe to my channel comments are free I'm not going to charge you anything for them I have a page as well on Instagram it's journal of a homeschooler I see you then bye bye